guys, and welcome back to another episode of From the Shadows. We're on Big Derby Day, so let's take a little look at how we've been doing in the League and Cup over the last couple of weeks. Aragio's ball in, Batuba's flick on header, and it's in the back of the net, and Stad can't have the lead after just two minutes. Bilal Batuba, 1-0 Stad can't. Terry steps up, can he convert it? He can, of course he can. Stad can't won, and a deserved equaliser for Paris. Alberto Cherry continues his incredible goal scoring form into this match. Con Sidibi at the back post, it's in the back of the net. Stad Car 1, Paris 2, and an enormous goal there from Herb Sidibi, which keeps Paris in that hunt for Champions League football. Goes round his man, good play from him. He's into the box now, which is even better. Can he pull him back across? He can, and Cherry's in there. It is Stad Car 1, Paris 3, and yet another brilliant turnaround, and another goal for Alberto Cherry. 43 this year from him. There you go, Stad Car 1, Paris 3. The wins in the league continue. Matas' free kick, and it's in the back of the net, and that's the goal we needed. Le Mans nil, Paris 1. Joseph Matas, first goal of the season. Pips it across, Rangwin's oh, he's in the back of the net, their first shot on target the entire game, and Jan Rangwin makes it Le Mans 1, Paris 1. No sooner had we got ourselves in front, but they'd equalised. Paris stepping the tempo up a little bit now. Pepe goes through there, and... Oh, come on! Ortiz has somehow let Rangwin get through. If they score again... Unbelievable. Ah, oh, they're a second division side. We've beaten like four top tier teams in this tournament so far. And we're now 2-1 down to the... Trey steps up and somehow we're 3-1 down. It wasn't even in the fucking box. Rang it through again. How the fuck is this happening? Every fucking time. There we go. 4-1 down to the side from the lower division. Every single shot on target went in. The moment we went in front, they became Barca fucking loner. Ridiculous, but there you go. Not back down to it. This is an, one of the biggest games of our season right now. Luis with the big header. What a moment that is for us. Paris have the lead here, I think, if it will actually eventually show us that we do. We must do. Yes, we do. And we go very close to that fourth, uh, third spot. There we have it. A 1-0 win away at Stad Ream. That is a massive win for our season. Bulan's ball in. There's two minutes to go here. Oh, Riviere couldn't quite get that. Uchan flicks it on, though. Flicked on. It's in the back of the net. I think Sendley Riviere has scored. He has. Paris won Marseille nil in the 93rd minute. Sendley Riviere. There we go. Paris won Olympic Marseille nil. Super sub Sendley. My goodness. Right, guys, we're back. So, yeah, as you can see, in the league, we've been absolutely tearing things up now. Six straight wins in the league. But that cup competition, yet again, just one of those games where every single shot they have on target goes in the back of the net. We just seem to have those games way too often. And I actually thought, well, actually, we're a crappy defensive team, but we've actually got the same number of clean sheets as the other good sides. So we've got the joint most clean sheets in the league. So I don't really know what's going on. It just seems that sometimes when it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And it's very, very strange. But there you go. So if we can get 150 likes on this episode, that would be fantastic as we're moving towards uh, the end. Hopefully this year we can still finish with a bit of a flourish. That's the plan anyway. And of course, I will still be doing like videos like this every single day up until FM16 comes out. Uh, because I don't know, I feel like you subscribed to me, so you should get content like this. Um, so I'm going to keep working hard to give you guys that up until, of course, uh, FM16. Now, of course, the question of the day is uh, quite a simple one that relates into that slightly. And that is, what will be the first FM16? Saved. Now, I have, of course, talked about this, and most of you will, of course, know, but just in case you were new to the channel, perhaps, or just didn't notice that sort of stuff, I will do a, a plans video where I kind of outline what I'm going to do for FM16. But basically, we're doing a rebuilding AFC Wimbledon, basically, or rebuilding Wimbledon, so to speak. Um, so yeah, that's going to be our first save of, uh, well, sorry, we'll be doing Hidden Dragon with Wales in the beta, but once the full game is out, I'll be doing a save with AFC Wimbledon, uh, basically. Now, of course, uh, we'll be doing a sort of, sort of documentary thing like we did uh, with Paris at the start. I'm really uh, working hard on that. Even right now, I'm working on that to give you an idea of how long that's going to take to do. But I feel like it's going to be worth it. It will be every single day episodes of AFC Wimbledon do not worry sometimes two if I'm really pushing things or we get some episodes that take a little bit less time to make I'll do some double upload days to really push it out there because I'm really looking forward to doing it I'm hoping we can get the channel back on track again basically so that's the plan with that um so without further ado let's take a little look at how things are going so let's take a little look at the league first so as you can see we're fourth in the league now we've moved ourselves up and we have now got a seven point gap back to Stad Ream in the last um 
well, the team that could knock us out of the Europa League spot. So we're certainly starting to build a bit of a gap there. And I think that Europa League now is absolutely, you know, starting to look completely in the back, uh, basically. Now, this is the thing. Look, we've conceded 41 goals, as you can see, but 13 clean sheets still, the same as all the other big sides. So we've just conceded them in bunches, it seems. It's very, very strange. Um, we can still go on some really good runs of clean sheets too, but there we go. So we're the second best goal scorers in the league as well with 63. Decent goal difference, although we do still need to catch up to the teams above us, Nantes and Olympic Marseille, which I hope we can do. But as you can see... We're seven points behind Marseille now, but we do have a game in hand and eight behind Nantes again with the game in hand. So a win there puts us right back into that battle and we still have to play, you know, the likes of Monaco, but it is at home and that will be a massive win for us because that will really get them off of our back. And then we've got some really winnable games coming up. So I think with our running, we could have a real go at maybe even getting into that top three and getting ourselves a Champions League spot again. But with the way things are, if we went on a really good run, there is a potential chance that we could grab second and help ourselves a shitload in terms of Champions League qualification because I think second place goes into a slightly different round, which would save us some time and allow us a good summer. If we get the right amount of money in the summer, we could maybe strengthen in the right areas. I want to see if we can buy a goalkeeper that's really top quality, but I just don't think we're going to have the funds available to do that to actually find someone that's better than Seagulis. But that's how you go. Um, so we've got, what? eight games to go we'll have today's game and in the next episode is going to be the final day of the season so we'll do six live uh, six league games off camera and then the final one of course will be um the, probably what will decide how we do this year so hopefully if the form continues then that should be fantastic so as the squad looking right now um last five matches uh tell you what i've got to say Orberg has only played eight times for us but look at that an average of 7.5 he's done well uh ruiz is having a lovely time of it as well and unfortunately the worst performer over the last five games has actually played enough it's actually Jochen bulens with a 6.68 he's not done well uh in those matches which is disappointing because he's a very good player as for key passes luis should be all look at that 210 um he should be leading the league on those i would have thought Look at that, 123 key passes in the league is absolutely dominating and dwarfing other people. Carlos Ruiz is covering more distance than anybody else. Um, and of course, Roberto Cherry, 28 times he's struck the back of the net in 30 matches. So very, very good. But we still need a big performance out of him today. And that brings us to today against PSG. It's always going to be a tough game when we play PSG. We've beaten them once and that was in the cup, uh, in the you know what I mean, in the Super Cup, and we drew against them once. Uh, but unfortunately, the other 13 have all gone to PSG. We need to change that. I want to get our first league win against them, but I don't think it's going to be today, uh, unfortunately. So we're going to have to just kind of make do. I think as long as this defeat, if we do lose it, doesn't completely knock us to shit and ruin the confidence for the rest of the season. I really don't want that, which is why I'm hoping that we can go out there and at least give ourselves a good show, basically. Uh, Cherry and Aslan both picked up injuries against Marseille as well. They are back, thankfully. They weren't serious ones, but it meant that we ended up playing most of that game with Obradovic up top um, and someone else who I can't remember who it was, actually. Uh, Al-Qaeda playing in Aslan's position. So it wasn't exactly the perfect solution, but we did get the win in the end through Sendly Riviere. That is one of my favourite goals of the save so far. That was so important because um, that game was dog pops it really was awful i actually ended up putting it on shoot on site just to see if we could try and nick something from a corner if we got loads of shots on target we'd win a few more corners uh that was the plan anyway and it seemed to work actually because it did in fact give us what it did but it could have gone horribly wrong for us so um let's just jump into this one we're gonna stay on control because it's psg we may as well go there and say right come at me bro and that's basically what we're doing right now um they're obviously the favorites as you would expect but i don't know one of these days we're gonna get one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. And uh, 150, uh, sorry, 125 appearances for Aslan. That's nice to see. So Correa, Ocampos, Kovacic, uh, Depay, Hjoberg, Romero. I don't know what that is there. Digne, uh, Levin. You hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Is he the guy that he bloody well is, you know? That's the guy that I wanted to try and sign. Damn it. Uh, Vallejo, Marquinhos, Sidigu on the bench. Ah, right. So I wanted to see this guy. Uh, Roman Pvitka. No, Pitkivka. Um, so there you go. I think, I think someone said they wanted to see that guy. So there you go. That's some of his career stats for you. Um, Lamela, uh, Leonusi, Duro, Azpilicueta, interesting, and Unai Lopez. So yeah, um, this is going to be difficult, as you would expect. But we just need to try and... One day I'm hoping that we get a lucky game. Like, we've always, like we have so many of them against us when we play crappy teams, like particularly against Valencians. Um, I want a game like that just for us against PSG. That's I think, is how we're going to get our first win against them. It will give us the confidence and they'll get the monkey off our back to know that we actually can do it. Or oh, Campos has gone... Bloody hell, they nearly scored within 10 seconds there, guys. You need to tighten up a little bit more than that. We really, really do. Um, they've started very, very strongly here. That's disappointing. Depay... Oh, and the, oh, the guy we wanted as well, Levon Uchiel, makes it 1-0 to PSG, and they've absolutely blitzed this first 10 minutes. Look at that, three half chances already. Um, 
as long as we don't completely destroy our goal difference in today's game, we may actually have to go to counter attack because they're going to not they're not going to stop. Um, such an easy goal to concede as well. Depay with the back flick down and a great strike from the centre back. Seagris perhaps could have been instead of doing semaphore, perhaps should have actually saved that. But hey, uh, right. So yeah, we need to make a couple more changes here. I'm going to immediately make some changes. Um, what was the change I was going to make? I was going to go on counter. I'm also going to go on retain possession just to try and keep the ball away from them um, if we can potentially do that. But I sense this could end up being a poor one, uh, which is a real shame because we've played well lately. I'm oh, not another one from a throw. And these long throws are just absolutely... Oh, what the fuck? We don't need that in addition to the shitty play as well. We don't need the bad luck of giving away those nothing penalties as well. Uh, we gave one of, one of those in the uh, cup tie as well, except this one... The one in the cup tie wasn't even near the box. It was sort of around about here. And Ocampo steps up and it is 2-0 to PSG. They thoroughly deserve the lead, but we don't need to help them by giving away those stupid penalties like that. Um, damn it. This is not a good game for us so far. Not a good game at all. Um, oh, he's clapping before he's even taken it. Cocky git. Um... I don't really know where to go from here, unfortunately. They really have turned up, and I thought they might not do, because they actually had a midweek game, and we've had nine days off to really recover and get our players back fit for this one, but they have just turned up and gone, nope. Um, it's going to be one of those guys' games. One of those games, guys. Digne's ball in, and it'll probably get headed straight in at the near post. Correa turns around, Ocampos is strike, Sigurdis makes the save, and he actually does make a good save that time, to be fair to him. But this looks like this game is already a write-off, um, frankly. Digne. Oh, it's them with the ball. I don't really know where to go from here because we're two goals down. If we try and absolutely thump at them in the second half, we will concede more goals, basically. And, right, just deal with it. And I'd rather just sit on counter and absorb the pressure, frankly, for the rest of this match to try and help the goal difference a little bit. We need to keep it as high as we can because we've got other games that, that are more important than this one, frankly, in terms of, um, you know, <laughs> those goal differences are important for us. Barguji, out wide. Oh, I like your ideas there, Frauzi, but that was not what we wanted. Uh, Depay. He's got back into position, though, quite cleverly. Kovacic. Huyberg. Correa. There's so much space. Kovacic isn't offside, though, and wow, that is an awful effort from Kovacic. But look at the first half performance from Pierre. Oh, come on. Just give us a break. I'd like to not lose this by, like, 5 or 6 nil. I want to just try and keep things a little bit tighter in the second half. Oh, Campos. Oh, come on! They don't need the additional, like... They don't need the help to score goals. They're good enough to beat us anyway, but when they get to go and score goals like that... Look at the angle he's got here. I mean, really? When does that fucking hell? We don't need... Like, they really do not need help, game. If, in case you're listening, game, they actually don't need the help. Um, with those annoying penalties and that kind of goal from those types of angles is just ridiculous. Um, right, okay. Second half then, I guess. What do we do? We just have to go out there and try again. They've gone 4-4-2 now in the second half, which actually we play slightly better against. And I've actually found that against 4-4-2, if we exploit the middle... Um, I can't remember who we did it against, but it worked a treat. Uh, we, were goal, we were goal down in one of our games in the last episode, and I actually put Exploit the Middle on, and it just tore them apart in the second half. But I don't think that's going to be the case against PSG today, unfortunately, because um, they're just... Everything they touch is turned into gold, unfortunately. Every pass they make, even if one of my players is in the way, it just seems to go straight through them. Lamella, Depay, and Sigris is... Mm. There you go, PSG 4... I don't really need this. The goal difference is so important right now, and we're going to end up with... This is the sort of game we're going to end up getting run up. This is what I mean. Like, they're a good side, and they thoroughly deserve probably to be 4-0 up. But what I mean is, when we have these games where we go a couple of... What are you doing over with your feet? We seem to just let the floodgates open, even if we go to a more defensive setup, and that's what I mean. That's why we've got such a horrible um, goals against record, because we've got a lot of clean sheets to our names. Aslan? Goal? Okay. Uh, we've got a lot of clean sheets to our name, but the problem is when we do concede, it just seems to open the floodgates in games, even when we're playing sort of a sort of more conservative style. It's very bizarre, and that the players just don't seem to have any spine when those sort of things happen. Good pass through from Cherry, and Aslan, of all people there, and again, what is their goalkeeper doing? Going with his foot there. He could just Get down and save that easily. Um, it's really weird when they keep doing it. Uh, yeah, we'll sort that out, actually. Uh, another throw in here. Baguji. Are we going to get another goal? That would be quite something. No, we're not. We're going to concede from it, aren't we? Flipped over the top. Knocked down. Bit more space out here, though. Baguji. He's going to have a go, you know. And it's a save by Sirigu. But it's another shot on target, and that's at least something. We've got a goal here, which has at least stemmed the uh, flow of just crap against us in this game. Um, so, And at least it's boosted the goal difference back up again. I'd really like it if we could grab another one, but... I'll tell you what, Cherry's been pretty woeful today um, up front, which is a real shame, but Joachim Bulens has been absolutely abysmal. Um, so he is coming off, and frankly, Christians is coming on. 
for him. And Uchan's not been great either. But Labi Amara is not really set up for that. Look at these defenders. Okay, we're going to have to make triple subs here. It has to be done. And it's going to be Amara. And it's going to be him on four. Wagner, because he's already on a yellow card. I know he's got a bit more fitness, but he's played the worst. And he's on a yellow. Uh, here we go. And Bart throws that to absolutely nobody. This is the thing I don't understand as well. Why is it when you're against a good opponent like that? Like they've the, PSG did nothing there. And yet somehow they still end up with the ball. Oh, it's in the back of the net. And Umbar's got on the end of it now. PSG 4, Paris 2. Abraham Umbar has reeled us back another goal. But what I mean is, like, why did he throw it directly to their player when we had a completely open man? It makes no sense. Great strike from him. And again, wacky goalkeeping from Sirigu. And this is what I mean. Sirigu is probably one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He's certainly up there. And yet he's making horrific, glaring errors constantly. Uh, should we go for one more? Should we go on attacking and just try and... Th oh, great. Free kick straight in the back of the net. Yep. Okay. Um, well, 5-2. At least we scored a couple of goals in this game, you know. Um, but yeah, Sidigu's made two pretty shitty pieces of goalkeeping in that sense. And that's what I mean about replacing Segrist. Even if we bought the best goalkeeper in the world, he'd still do stupid things constantly. And it's not worth our money, basically. We've just got to try and do things we to try and mitigate that rather than to... Um, we've got to accept it as part of the game, basically. Um and just accept that there's going to be more goals than there should be. Aslan's ball in. Holt turns beautifully there. And Barguji's put it in. And again, Sirigu probably should have had that. This game has gone really weird. Like, we look like we were completely dead in the water in this match. And we've suddenly scored three times against them in the second half. This would be so much closer if we hadn't let that one goal in. Lovely touch from Holt. Sirigu's in a good position. But again, goes with his feet. Um, and perhaps that was a better... You know, a better effort with his foot there to save that. And perhaps I'm being a bit harsh on it on that one. But still, they do seem to go with their feet more than you would expect them more than you would expect a real goalkeeper to. Oh, don't let them have a sixth one. We've done so well. Don't let him score again. Duro and a great block in the end. 5-3. I will take that. Um, it's, you know, we've scored three times against PSG, and I think that'd be the first time that we've ever done that um, so far in this save. So I'll accept that. Uchan now, and a Holt is never going to win that. Oh, he has! Go on, Ivor. He's got the pace, you know. Oh, you know, no, he doesn't. Marquinhos, terrible touch from Ivor Holt. Imagine if he'd made it 5-4 there. Um, out of nowhere, what a second half performance from us, frankly. Um, we've actually won... The second half, uh, which is saying something. We just unfortunately let too many goals in in that first period. Aslan threw for Holt again. Ah, Holt's making some good, intelligent runs, and I'm really enjoying his work. But the little substitutions, I think, have actually made the difference a little bit because the players we had out there just weren't doing their jobs. Oh, please don't let us concede a sixth one. We've done, we don't deserve a sixth goal to concede. Um, I don't think we've deserved to score three either, but we've done a good show of it ourselves. Only losing two goals. Uh, by two goals against PSG here isn't too bad for me, actually. I'll, I'll accept a 5-3 five, five, is actually pretty respectable uh, in some respects. And he's fouled him, and that should do it for us. And that will be enough for me, I'd say. 5-3 isn't the worst result in the world. It keeps the goal difference relatively high. We can have a real attack at those sides. It wasn't... It was disappointing, but we still had some good chances in that game. Um, so there we go. So... We've got a lot of work to do, but I still think that we've got it in the tank to do it. And you'll find out if we do do it in the next episode. Um, I don't suppose that the final game of the season is going to be uh, an easy one. My guess is that the final game of the year will be what it all rests on. We'll probably have ourselves in a position where we can maybe, if we do well enough, get something. But that last game, it should probably come all down to that, really. Because we've got a lot of the teams. I think we have to play Nice, Tours, Valenciennes. Um, we've got to play three of the bottom four in our last few matches as well. So let's just take a look. We've got Monaco next at home. I'd love to see us win that. We need to as well, because they are the ones really chasing us down. Uh, Stad Reim, sorry, Stad Rene. That's going to be a really tough away game, but we've shown we've got what it takes. Valencians at home is an absolute must-win game. Olympic Lyonnais away from home could be tough, but I still think we've got it in us. And then we've got Tours at home. Uh, sorry, Nice at home is must win. Tours away, and then Bastia, um, who aren't that great either at home. And I think we've got enough in the tank. I want to see if we can genuinely take as many points from those games as possible. I would accept maybe losing one. I want to see us take 18 points from our final uh, seven matches of the season, basically. That's the plan. And that, with that 18 points, that would give us 73 points. And I can't remember what we got last year. Um, but, yeah, let's just take a little gander, actually. Last year, we got 70. So, 73 would probably be enough over the last few years. Would comfortably be enough to actually get us into the Champions League spot. So I would even probably settle for like 71. But we'll see. If you've enjoyed this episode, guys, please do drop a like on the video. That would be marvellous. And if you'd like to even more than that, please do subscribe to the channel for more Outcaster icons and from the shadows in your inbox every other day at 7.30. At uh, 7 o'clock, rather. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the probably one of the most important moments of this uh, entire save at this point because it could really set us back a long way if we don't do it. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.